Okay, is that a time of year when everyone's wrapping up the year that has just gone by, 2010? So as you can see by the title of this video, that's uh, it's up there, somewhere. Don't know if you can see it or not. But um, yeah, basically this is my year in review, 2010, 2010 awards video. I'm going to get straight into it, my wrestler of the year. Who is the wrestler who you feel... Deserves the most credit for the 2010 their work in 2010. And to me, I've got to give it to AJ Styles. Now, I'm going to give it to AJ Styles because this year, TNA has been quite horrible. Now, horrible is um, it's a relative concept, really, isn't it? To me, it's been quite horrible. Other people might think it's been quite good. I personally have not liked TNA this year. Well, I liked the first half of the end and the second half, not so much. But yeah, to me, AJ Styles has kept TNA watchable. They have kept TNA relevant. He's kept TNA relevant. And him being in TNA, putting on fantastic matches over and over again, has made me want to watch TNA shows and TNA previews. Because I know if I watch something, I'm going to see AJ Styles put on a really good match. So yeah, AJ Styles to me was the rest of the year. Superstar of the year, who's the guy who's the biggest superstar now? We all know who this is going to be. John Cena, I'd give it to. Um, you know, the guy just transcends the sport. He is a well, he's a household name pretty much nowadays. He's in films, he, he's on TV shows, he's, he does wrestling. And obviously he's put a CD out a few years ago. So yeah, John Cena, my superstar of the year. Nobody else in the world of pro wrestling, it, ne never mind this year, just in the last few years, has been bigger than John Cena in terms of a global superstar. John Cena is the pro wrestling superstar of 2010. Rookie of the year, to me it's got to go to someone who's not really wrestled before this year. Someone who's just burst on the scene out of nowhere. Some people have given it to Alberto Del Rio, I don't really agree with that because you know he was... Um, Alberto Banderas last year in FCW and then uh, Dos Casas Jr. was it before that in Mexico so yeah I don't really agree with people giving it to Bar uh, Del Rio although it was fantastic this year you know just come out of nowhere to be brilliant but I've got to give it to Wade Barrett the guy has come from absolutely nothing to being a WWE <coughs> a bona fide WWE main eventer people are crying over John Cena burying him oh John Cena's buried him he put the chairs on him he beat some matches People need to understand, like I know a lot of people do understand, but for the people who don't understand, let me just explain something to you. The Wade Barrett at the start of the year, when I first saw him, I uh, can't remember what the date was, but it was a January show of FCW. He was a commentator. The camera was on him for a grand total of probably 30 seconds during the entire hour-long episode. Wade Barrett was shown as a nobody to me, just a commentator, just an average... Average Joe, I didn't even know if he, that he was a wrestler until he was on, on NXT. And then John Cena made his career by selling for him for six months. John Cena has been putting Wade Barrett over and over and over again. He's been putting him over. He's just continually been putting him over. And then he beats him once and then everybody cries and says, Oh, John Cena's buried Wade Barrett. Well, he's not buried him. He's made his career. Barrett has gone from, like I said, being a commentator in January to their main event in five of the last six pay-per-views that the, the WWE has been doing. And it wasn't even a WWE commentator, it was an FCW commentator. I know it's a, subdi sub uh, it's a subsidiary of the WWE, I couldn't even get that out then. Probably got it wrong in the end. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just a part, it's a part of the WWE, but it's FCW. Not many people watch that show, and Barrett was just a commentator, and now he's a main eventer on Raw. You've got to understand how far he's come, and he's done had a fantastic year himself. He is a good worker in the ring. He's not fantastic, but he's passable. If I was going to rate his in-ring skills, I'd give him 3 out of 5, sort of 3 star talent. But on the mic, he's a 5 star talent, and the way he can play his character, he's a 5 star talent. He's done fantastic well this year. Rookie of the Year, Wade Barrett. Now, most improved, who, would you, who do you lot think is the most improved wrestler this year? In my opinion, I've got to give it to the Miz, the guy. I hated him at the start of the year, and I, I still don't, not too fond of him, but he's been fantastic. And them giving him the WWE title has cemented it in my mind, the way he has come from basically... An okay lower mid card talent to a main event and now people have moaned about Miz as well saying oh he's, they're making him win matches really weakly and it's making him look shit he shouldn't even be champion because they're not booking him like a champion. Cha There's no such thing as booking him like a champion you can't book everybody like Bill Goldberg if you did then Goldberg wouldn't have been special and the rest of them would just be boring. You've got to book champions differently. You've got to have some sneaky uh, champions. Some guys are going to sneaky win it. And that's the gimmick that Miz has been given. And we should be thankful that he's been given to play. Because he plays it so very well. So yeah, most improved this year is the Miz. Now, face of the year. Who's the guy who 
as a face, the crowd wants to get behind. Who's the guy when the f fans see him in trouble, they start to cheer for him, they start to cry, and they start to moan when he loses. For me personally, I've got to say it's John Cena. John Cena is the face of the year. When John Cena is in peril, when John Cena is getting his ass kicked, the fans cry. Women, little children, they cry when John Cena gets beaten. They don't cry when Randy Orton gets beaten. They don't cry when anybody else gets beaten. They cry, though, when John Cena is getting his ass beaten. They are so upset when their hero, John Cena, is getting his ass up. That's why, to me, he is the face of the year. He's the one guy who really... <coughs> is the true meaning of a face, he gets the fans behind him, the fans really care about him. Face of the year is John Cena. Now, who's the heel, who's the total opposite of that, who's the heel that when it, he's beating up their heel, they absolutely hate it. I've got to give it to Wade Barrett, the fans hated Barrett this year. Miz is a close second, but the fans, to me, absolutely hated Wade Barrett. The, the way he just came in and kicked Cena's ass, <coughs> with seven guys backing him up was so slimy and then he continued to do it and then he lost members and he lost members and now it went down to he had four guys behind him now he's got no guys behind him apparently but the way he's, he did that the way he had guys backing him up and he was still beating up Cena you know the fans absolutely hated him to me he's a true meaning of heel heel of the year to me is Wade Barrett tag team of the year who is it going to go to it's obviously not going to go to anyone in the WWE First of all, I'm going to tell you who came second, and that was the Kings of Wrestling. And I'll tell you why I became second in mind. Because, <coughs> although they're a fantastic tag team, done very well in the last year, I've not seen enough of them to grant them Tag Team of the Year. And also, what I have seen of them doesn't match up to what I've seen of the tag team who are the best, and that is, to me, the Motor City Machine Guns. They've put on constant, fantastic matches with beer money, more, with a generation me even. Um, who else did they have good matches with? I can't even remember. Uh, Ink Ink didn't they have a few good matches with? So yeah, to me, Motor City Machine Guns have been so f good as a tag team this year. And I couldn't give it to anyone else. Just so good. The feud they have with, they had with Bear Money, the five matches thing, uh, five match series where they won that, and it's like a cage match and a ladder match and all that. So fucking good. I don't usually swear in my videos, but that was so fucking good. The Motor City Machine Guns carrying it. Well, not carrying it, because Bear Money carried their half, but Motor City Machine Guns are so good. Tag Team of the Year for me. Stable of the Year. <coughs> There's only one who we could go to. Well, in mainstream master anyway. And that's the Nexus. The Nexus is so good. The way they debuted on Raw. Beating up John Cena. Beating up the Hero. Beating up anyone, everyone at ringside. Daniel Bryan choking out uh, Justin Roberts with a tie. Which I still think to this day was a work. Everyone else thinks that uh, Bryan actually got fired. I don't believe that. But that's another story. Yeah, Nexus to me. Stable of the Year. Just fantastic. A real, a real good group. Tight, compact, the leader fires off anyone who's not good enough for the group, so it's not like the end of your just pick up guys who are rubbish and just keep picking them up and just keep all of them. Nexus were getting rid of the weak links and all that, can't have you, get rid of, uh, see you later, um, Michael Tavis, see you later, Darren Young, getting rid of the guys who they didn't feel were good enough. So yeah, Nexus were a fantastic heel still and sold together, so good at um, picking their chances and getting noticed, kayfabe wise. Women's at Wrestle of the Year, now this is the first award that I'm going to, oh actually, can I just say that Stable of the Year, close second I would give to the BDK, but again I'm not seeing enough of the BDK to grant me saying that they are better than Nexus, and to be honest, what I did, I've seen is nowhere near as good as what Nexus have done. Nexus, the way they ripped the ring up on John Cena, I showed that to a friend of mine, and she was like, oh my god, what are they doing? Like, I said, they all, I said no, this is real, this, and she believed me, she fully believed me, and at the end I was like, oh, it wasn't real. And she was like, are you sure? Are you sure it wasn't real? It looks really real, it looks really real. And to her, to her as a casual, not even a fan of wrestling, just a casual viewer of t television, she watched it and she was almost in tears watching like these eight men beat up John Cena and beat up these uh, random ring announcers. So yeah, Nexus easily went about BDK, I'd probably have to give them to as a close second from Shikara. That's Buddhist Kess, I can't even pronounce it. It's some German word, isn't it? Anyway, Women is Wrestler of the Year, the first award I am going to give to an independent wrestler slash promotion. This is going to go to Sarah Del Rey. This woman is more than a woman's wrestler. Women's wrestling to me, well, is shown in the mainstream to be inferior. Sarah Del Rey wrestles like a man now. She doesn't wrestle like a fantastic man. She doesn't wrestle like a David Richards. But she does wrestle in a strong way, in a way that makes it realistic, makes it believable, makes you want to watch the matches, not just a Gayle Kim versus Kelly Kelly match where... Gail Kim's going to have to carry the match. Sarah Del Rey's going to beat the crap out of her opponent, and her opponent will carry her after the match as well. So, yeah, Sarah Del Rey, she's probably had better women's wrestlers to work. 
than the woman in the WWE, but to me, Dara Ray has been such a fantastic um, woman's wrestler that she's just better than anyone else this year. Non wrestling personality, well, wrestling personality who's not a wrestler, who would you give that to? I'd give mine to Michael Cole. He's been absolutely brilliant. The way he was bitching about Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan beat him up, then the way he was so behind Miz and then the way he's uh, so behind Cena as well, you can definitely tell that he is. People said that it doesn't make sense that the way he, he supports the bad guy, then he supports the good guy. No, what you don't need. What people need to understand is that he's the company guy. He's being shown as a company guy. He's not a heel. He's not a face. He's just a company guy. He's behind who he believes can lead the company. That's how Michael Cole is being booked. If he, kayfabe wise, if his character sees someone who's not good enough to carry the company, that aka Daniel Bryan. And, and in kayfabe wise if Michael Cole doesn't believe that then he's got to go at him and he's got to get behind the guys that he thinks can lead the company Miz and Cena who are in reality the guys who do lead the company so yeah Michael Cole fantastic non-wrestler so he gets my award for that match of the year now this is a strange one I'm going to go for Davey Richards versus Roderick Strong but not the one from Final Battle I'm going to go for their television match from the 4th of January 2010. Now the 4th of January 2010 was a massive day in wrestling history. For those of you who do not remember, some of you, probably all of you do still remember. But let me just give you a quick recap for those of you who don't. Maybe you're watching this a few, in a few years time. Maybe this is 2017 when you're watching this and need a bit of a recap. But basically this is what happened. Hulk Hogan, the WWE's, one of the biggest stars in the history of pro wrestling, went to TNA. So TNA were going to do a live impact on Monday to go against WWE Raw. WWE needed, needed to counter it, so they got hold of Bret Hart, who swore that he would never wrestle for the WWE ever again. He'd never appear on their television ever again. He'd never do anything to get Vince McMahon money ever again. He decided to come back Raw live on the 4th of January up against TNA. Was the Hitman Returns on Raw and Hogan debuts on TNA Impact. That was going against each other. Before all this happened, though... Davey Richards went up against Roderick Strong and put on a fantastic match in the Pick 6 series. This was my first ever viewing of an ROH show. I'd never seen an ROH show before this. I'd seen odd matches of uh, Davey and other guys um, like Nigel McGuinness, Brian Danielson, um, Roderick Strong, um, Claudio Castagnoli and there's one other... There was six guys, Tyler Black, there was those guys who I picked out matches of them and I watched those matches but I'd never seen the show before. I watched this show and it was absolutely... Well, it wasn't that great, but this match was a fucking five. Sorry, I don't mean to swear, but a five-star match, Richards versus um, Roderick Strong. I think Richards won the match. It was part of the Pick Six series, which they're doing at the time. Um, but yeah, match of the year. People said that the final battle, ba the final battle match was better, but to me, the impact that first match had on me, because it was my first show that I was watching of Ring of Honor, the impact it had on me was like wow. This is brilliant. I've got to keep watching this. So yeah, and that's what kept me watching ROH. Oh so, yeah, that original impact of watching that first match. So yeah, that's why I got to give it to that. Feud of the year is Kevin Steen versus El Generico. Now that people might be like, oh, why is he talking about indie wrestling? Indie wrestling is rubbish. This has been the best feud that I can remember in a long like I can't remember a better feud than this like in the last ten years. Off the, top of, off the top of my head, probably there is one, but off the top of my head, from what, because I've been watching wrestling more constantly this year than I have in years before, apart from when I was a, a kid, hence why I decided to come back to YouTube this year and come on YouTube and start sharing my opinions, but this El Generico Kevin Steen feud has been so good, the way they built it up from Final Battle 2009 and made it end on Final Battle 2010, they built it up to be so strong, going from... Steen attacking at Generico and then Generico not wanting to fight back then Generico finally fighting back and then bringing in Colt Cabana and um, Steve Carino into the mix two great workers as well and then it ending this year in that fight without honour just a six star match if ever if ever I'd give a match six stars it was that because to me what a way to end pay per view for 2010 for Ring of Honor what a way to say come back next year come back and watch us next year that has really got me wanting to watch again Promotion of the year, to me, it's got to be WWE. Now, people will be like, oh, you're a WWE mark. Even though I just gave two awards in a row to ROH and three, if you count the Sarah Del Rey one, because even though the Michael Cole one's in the way. I think WWE's been the best promotion in the world this year, mainly because the way they've brought in the new guys, the way they did the Nexus thing, the way they had Bret Hart coming back at the start of the year, all these fantastic things coming in. 
WWE to me promotion of the year and also they brought Miz into the forefront they got Del Rio working in it now these guys are going to be the best workers in the world in my opinion in the next few years when I, actually, when I say best workers in the world the big superstars of the world in the next few years Del Rio, Miz, Barrett Barrett is going to be the English superstar I think he's going to be the, our first world champion isn't he we all think that so yeah, WWE uh, promotion of the year surprise of the year Bret Hart's return Although we'd heard the rumours and it was confirmed online that Bret Hart was going to come back on January 4th edition of Raw, when it finally happened and watching it, it was a surreal occasion for me just watching Bret Hart come out on WWE TV. Although he looked like a shadow of his former self, you can't say that way for me. He's got older, we all get older, everyone gets older, you can't blame him for that. He looked, he just looked fantastic, him coming out on WWE Raw, it was just brilliant. A massive surprise, just the, that is the surprise of the year for me. Segment of the year, again, going with a Bret, the Bret Hart theme here, is when him and Shawn Michaels made up in the ring. As a fan, as a long time fan that I have been, and when I was in the height of my fandom, the height of my, be, me being a mark, was wet, like 1997 era, 96 when um, Shawn versus Bret at WrestleMania was one of, one of the biggest matches of my childhood, the match that I was most excited about. The Montreal screw job. I was such a big fan back then, and my two, the two guys who I was massive fans of were Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. They had the falling out, and then they finally reconciled, reconciled in the middle of the ring, and it was just a fantastic segment. Watching Shawn and Bret make up, it was just like brilliant. Obviously, you've got to give an honourable mention to the Nexus angle where they just invaded Raw. That was brilliant, but you know Shawn and Bret. Like hugging in the middle of the ring, making up with each other, just absolutely brilliant. That is my segment of the year. Show of the year, ROH's final battle 2010. To me, like I just said before, what a fantastic way to end the year. By having two five-star matches in a row with David Richards and Roderick Strong and then Steam vs. Generico. Two great matches to end the year and say, you know what, come back next year, we've got more for you. It's got me wanting to watch ROH more and more. And I'm a bigger fan now than I ever have been. And I'm not a massive fan. I've only been watching for a year, but I am a fan nonetheless. Um, weekly show of the year. Now, I only know of a few. I know the WWE ones, which are Raw, SmackDown, ECW, which was on the start of the year, NXT, and <coughs> Superstars. Then there's the free TNA ones. There's Reaction, Impact, Explosion. Then there's ROH on HD Net. Then there's Dragon Gate Infinity, which is from Japan. I only know those ten. Out of the ten, I've got to give it to WWE Raw. The way they've, you know, they started off so strongly with Shawn Michaels coming back on the first episode, beating Impact in that first week, which is really important. We've got to beat Impact. They're bringing in Hogan. We've got to beat them. They're coming on to our Monday night. We've got to beat them. Teach Eric Bischoff a lesson that he can't just come in. And like kick our asses like he did last time on Monday nights. The way they started so strongly, they brought the Nexus in, they brought Miz to the forefront with the world title, just absolutely brilliant. And all this, mostly without Triple H, and they also took their main guy, John Cena, said, you know what, take a, take a step back, we're not going to involve you in the title picture, we'll put you in the main events, we'll keep you featured, but we're not going to put the title on you. That was just so good for the WWE, and this has been a fantastic year for Raw. And now, to wrap it up, I'm going to induct six people into my Hall of Fame. I always induct two singles wrestlers, a tag team, a woman's wrestler, and a non-wrestler. Last time around, I put in a Hulk, well, my only time around that I've done so far, is Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, the British Bulldogs, which is Dynamite Kingdom, the British Bulldog, David Boy Smith, and Lita, and Bobby Heenan. This time around, I'm going to put in Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, Axe and Smash of the Demolition, China, and Mr. Fuji. Now let me quickly explain why I went for these guys. Shawn Michaels has had a brilliant career. Only just retired this year. He fully deserves to go into the Hall of Fame. And I've decided to do my own Hall of Fame. Because Vincent Mann, the WWE Hall of Fame just exists in Vincent Mann's head. Nowhere else. There's no actual Hall of Fame. It's just a thing that's in his head and he decides who's in it and who's not in it. That's all it is. So we all deserve to make our own Hall of Fames because wrestling's like... And who we like is all relative to ourselves and who we all like. So this is who I do think deserves to be in it. So along with Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, along with Bret Hart and all those, I'm putting these guys in. I'm putting Shawn Michaels in because he's been such a good wrestler over the years. Of course he was a knobhead during his, um, the height of his career. But the way he's <coughs> came back over the last like six, seven years and was just so good. Shawn Michaels has got to be in there. Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
you know, one of the biggest superstars of all time. Now, you can quote me on this. I'm going to say that without Stone Cold Steve Austin, WWE would have lost the war to WCW and they would no longer be in business today. If they would be in business, there'd be a really small time promotion less than what TNA is right now if it wasn't for Stone Cold Steve Austin. He won the Monday Night Wars for the WWE. He was their main player. He was their only player to get them back on peak. Obviously, Rock and Triple H came along afterwards, but Austin was the one who got them to that point. Then we're going to put Axe and Smash in, you know, just a brilliant tag team, a really good powerhouse tag team, dominate anyone they put in the ring against, like even Under the Giant and Haku, what a match off that was. China, brilliant women's wrestler, she transcends women's wrestling, she would wrestle the men and she absolutely fit in those matches. She is a better worker than some of the guys WWE have right now. She's better than guys like third gener generation guys like Michael McGillicuddy and um, D.H. Smith. She is better than them. She's To an extent, she's better than Ted DiBiase as well as another third generation wrestler. She came along, woman, women had never been featured before and she came along, fought the men, stuck up for herself and she made herself work, like seem worth it, seem like a general, a, a actual competitor. China to me deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, especially as far as women's wrestling goes. And Mr. Fuji, just a fantastic manager. The way he managed demolition, powers of pain, and then Yokozuna, he was such a good heel. The way I hated him when he helped Yokozuna cheat to beat uh, Bret Hart at WrestleMania 9, and the way he turned on the demolition and joined the powers of pain at Survivor CV's 90, 1989. Yeah, the way he turned it, he was just a fantastic heel. But yeah, that's my year in review. Who do you think, who would you put in your Hall of Fame if you were to do one? Do you agree with my Hall of Fame? Do you think I shouldn't even do a Hall of Fame? Who do you think are the wrestlers of the year? Who do you think was the wrestler of the year? Who do you think was women's wrestler of the year? I'd love to know your comments on this video. But with that, I guess I'm out. I'm going to wish you all a happy new year as well as it's... I'm probably going to upload this on New Year's Eve. So yeah, um, I guess with that I'm out. So yeah, happy new year and I'll see you in the new year. See you later.